This week at Starbase, the orbital tank farm receives some reinforcements, SpaceX's LR11000 is laid down for a possible reconfiguration, and Booster 12 is cryo-tested at the SpaceX Massey's Outpost. Thanks for joining us for episode 98 of our weekly SpaceX updates. Now let's dig in. Starting off this week on Friday morning, a relatively small metal water tank arrived at the launch site and was delivered to the D4 gate. The new guardhouse at the D1 gate now appears to be structurally finished and just waiting for interior finishing before being put to use. Form work for poured concrete walls has gone up for the new building being constructed next to the flame deflector tank farm at the launch site. It appears that similar to the new guardhouse, this building is being built very robustly so it can withstand the forces of a Starship launch. Over at the tank farm, parts of the cryo shell load spreader were loaded onto a flatbed trailer for transport away from the area, indicating no more scrapping at this time. Nearby workers were busy grinding on a newly arrived steel beam, preparing the ends for welding as they worked to protect the remaining tanks. Most of the ship quick disconnect arm on the launch tower remains covered in scaffolding. It remains unclear exactly what is happening on the arm, if it is simply repairs and repainting, or if there are perhaps some robustness upgrades happening. A Versabar load spreader was spotted on a trailer in front of the Sanchez site. In the past, we have seen similar load spreaders used to move large horizontal tanks. Over at the build site, crews were busy inside of the remains of Tent 3 as they prepared for the final sections to come down. Down Highway 4 at SpaceX's new storage yard, the site has started to fill up while a fence is being built between the yard and the road. At the Massey outpost, the alarm began to sound and the PA called for the area to be cleared. Attention, the Massey site is now clear. Later, as dusk fell over Starbase, SpaceX began loading cryogenics into Booster 12 as it began a fresh round of cryogenic proof testing. During the test, the Super Heavy had its liquid oxygen tanks fully loaded while only a partial load was put into the vehicle's methane tank. The previous test had proofed the methane tank and the partial load for this test was more for protecting the integrity of the downcomer. As booster testing was underway at Massey's, a 26-axle line self-propelled modular transporter was spotted on its way to the launch site. This extra-long SPMT configuration is what SpaceX has been using to maneuver the new hot dog tanks into position at the tank farm. Later that night, a different SPMT picked up the old-style booster transport stand that was being stored at the launch site and moved back up Highway 4 to the build site. Meanwhile, at the build site, Booster 13's forward dome section was moved out of the ring yard and over closer to the doorway of Mega Bay 1 as crews worked to make room for the coming stand. A short time later, the Booster Transport stand arrived at the build site and made its way into the ring yard. This stand being staged here outside of Mega Bay 1 could be an indicator that SpaceX intends to use it for Booster 9 in lieu of the new style of transport stand. As the Massey outpost opened back up following the booster cryo test, a slurry wall grab was spotted being delivered. This is the second of these devices at Massey's now and should be used as part of the excavation of the supposed flame trench. In the early hours of Saturday morning, the last remaining section of Tent 3 was toppled, signaling the end of the era of production tents. This now clears the way for this latest phase of the Star Factory expansion to connect to the first section of the upgraded facility. Later that morning, the remaining section of the cryo shell load spreader as well as the vertical tank load spreader were loaded onto a truck and taken away from the launch site. A few hours later, two new vaporizers were delivered to the launch site. Once there, they were offloaded and placed next to the new horizontal tanks as SpaceX continues to work on reconfiguring the new orbital tank farm. Up Highway 4, at the Star Factory expansion, a concrete pump truck was once again working on the new footings in front of the new building which now extends to the front of the previous phase. At the same time, the steel crews continue to erect the structure for this latest area. Later that afternoon, SpaceX's LR11000 crane at the launch site was laid down. It wasn't immediately clear if the crane was undergoing maintenance, a reconfiguration, or if it was being removed from the launch site. 
On Sunday morning, the modular guard shack was picked up by a telehandler and moved closer to the container wall. This was likely to create extra space in the entryway for the coming tank. A short time later, SpaceX's smaller Grove mobile crane made its way through the launch site and over to the laid down LR-11000 crane to help with the work on it. Back up Highway 4 at the build site, the Versa bar load spreader seen on Sunday was spotted again. This time it was on a trailer behind one of SpaceX's yard mules, which parked it just inside the ring yard entrance. Just minutes later, as one of the build site LR-11000 treads was being loaded onto a trailer, two SPMTs loaded with steel beams and counterweights also pulled into the build site and parked behind the load spreader. Shortly after noon, several more truckloads of parts of the build site LR-11000 were spotted headed up Highway 4 as they left Starbase for parts unknown. A half an hour later, Raptor Roost camera caught more action on Highway 4 as another new horizontal cryogenic storage tank made its way to Starbase. In short order, the tank was driven to the launch site and offloaded. Once the transport was out of the way, the SpaceX SPMT picked up the tank and maneuvered it into the spot next to the other new tanks. As the new tank was being set down on its pedestals, the LR-11000 was having its jib mast removed. This made it clear that the crane was not undergoing the same maintenance we had seen previously, but rather something else altogether. On Monday, the A-frame and the counterweight saddles, some of the final components still on site from the build site LR-11000 crane, were spotted on flatbeds preparing to depart Starbase. At the Star Factory, the nose cone hall continues to grow towards the ring yard gate while roofing is being installed at the other end. Behind, the next section of columns and beams have been going in as this latest phase of the building is now growing towards the remains of Tent 3 as well. Late that night, Sentinel Cam was able to catch the load spreader moving in Mega Bay 1 as SpaceX crews began stacking Booster 13's methane tank. By the next morning, we could see the Super Heavy's forward section stacked on the top of the first methane tank section on the turntable in the corner of the bay. Booster 13's aft and LOX tank are already stacked inside the building. Also that morning, one of Ship 15's aft flaps was spotted having been loaded onto a flatbed and driven out of the build site. It's not yet clear what SpaceX has planned for this piece of that historic vehicle. A look inside of Mega Bay 1 shows us a small jib crane on top of a vertical truss behind Booster 10. The location of this on the back side of the engine installation stand seems to indicate that this would be used for installing the chines on the vehicles. The still open doorway into the first section of the nose cone hall lets us get a look at the equipment inside. A white multi-level work stand is set up next to a pair of robotic welders just inside the doorway. Further in, a tipless nose cone could be seen, although it's not yet clear if this is a pathfinder, a test article, or part of a future flight vehicle. Early on Tuesday afternoon, another new tank was spotted heading down Highway 4 towards Starbase. Like the previous tank, this one continued down the road and was eventually backed into the launch site. Once inside, it was moved around behind the seven previously installed new tanks and left as the transporter truck headed out. With the transporter vehicle out of the way now, the SpaceX SPMT picked up the tank and brought it back out into the launch site's D2 gates entryway. Unlike the previous tanks, this one was backed into position from the front side of the new tank farm as there is a strip of undeveloped land behind these last two tanks which prevents them from moving straight into position from the other side. Once in position, the tank was set down and the SPMT removed. On Wednesday morning, crews were spotted on a lift securing the top of a new steel beam that was added to the outside of the nitrogen cryo shell, which is now exposed to the launch mount following the removal of the water tank. In front of the orbital tank farm, crews were busy preparing other, shorter steel I-beams that are likely part of the same structure. Nearby, a small trench was being dug into the concrete in front of the horizontal tank section of the orbital farm. Behind the trenching, crews were busy installing new sections of pipes on the stands that were placed in front of the new horizontal cryo tanks. Behind the farm, the newly arrived metal water tank had been moved into place as SpaceX continues to work on hardening additional parts of the launch site. Nearby, the old plastic water tank that it is replacing was loaded onto a truck for transport away from the launch site. Crews continued to work on SpaceX's LR-11000 crane on Wednesday. 
We could see that while the fixed jib was laying nearby, the end of the main boom had been set down onto an SPMT. The pendants that normally connect the end of the boom to the A-frame had been disconnected. This led many of us to speculate that the crane might be moved away from the launch site in pieces. This would be similar to what happened to the Buckner LR11000 that was initially used at the launch site before moving to the build site to build Mega Bay 1. Later, the pendants were reconnected to the middle of the boom and then tensioned to raise the boom slightly while SpaceX's Grove GMK7550 mobile crane held the weight of the rest of the boom before things were set back down. An interesting A-frame steel structure was spotted being delivered to the ring yard. What do you think this structure's for? Knock yourself out in the comments below. A check-in on the Star Factory from the side lets us get a better look at the next section of the building. We can see that the columns in this next row appear to be just standard I-beams rather than the trusses we saw in the nose cone hall. Over by Mega Bay 2, the LR1300 crane that has been assisting in the construction of the building lowered its jib tip down to the ground, likely for maintenance. On Thursday, the doorway into the first phase of the Star Factory nose cone hall was covered over, robbing us of our view inside. Meanwhile, down at the launch site, crews continue to install the new steel support beams around the backside of the newly exposed nitrogen cryo shell. The beams were being spaced evenly around the shell, appearing to be the first start of a sort of protective exoskeleton. Nearby, workers were seen connecting the new metal water tank into the already existing piping in the area. At the liquid oxygen subcoolers, much of the new piping now appears to not only be finished, but also insulated and armored to better withstand the violence of a launch. Halfway up the tower, several workers were spotted out on the ship quick disconnect arm. The QD was moved and articulated several times as they worked below. By Thursday afternoon, the main boom of the LR11000 had been raised up off the SPMT and then lowered down to the ground before the pendants were once again disconnected. As the afternoon continued, more steel continued to be added to the new exoskeleton for the cryo shell. This new structure should prevent any kind of catastrophic failure of the cryo shell from either debris or the shockwave that occurs when 33 Raptors are fired. Some venting was also seen coming from the purge vent located halfway up the launch tower. This purging was part of SpaceX performing some sort of test following the recent work on the tank farm. Also that afternoon, we spotted that Booster 12 was disconnected from the ground support infrastructure at the Massey outpost, indicating the vehicle would be moving soon. Overnight, the booster was picked up by a pair of SPMTs and moved out of the Massey outpost and onto Highway 4. The Super Heavy then made its way back to the road to the Starbase, where it turned into the Sanchez site. After navigating through the area, Booster 12 was eventually parked in the Rocket Garden to await its turn for engine installation. Over at Cape Canaveral on Sunday night, Falcon 9 Booster 1073 launched its 12th mission as it lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 with another 23 Starlinks on their way to low Earth orbit. On Monday morning, Booster 1067 finished dockside processing and was lifted and laid onto the horizontal transporter for its return to Hangar X for refurbishment. On Tuesday, Doug returned to port carrying both of the fairing halves that it recovered from Sunday's Starlink Group 6-37 mission. The next morning, a short fall of Gravitas was towed back into Port Canaveral with Booster 1073 following the same Starlink launch from Sunday. Just a few hours later, the booster was lifted off of the deck of the drone ship and transferred to the dockside stand for processing ahead of its return to the Roberts Road facilities. In the early hours of Thursday morning, Doug was spotted heading out of Port Canaveral again with the destination of Charleston, South Carolina, likely for maintenance. Finally for this week on Thursday afternoon, Falcon 9 Booster 1080 launched SpaceX's 12th manned mission. Dragon Capsule Freedom carried the four-person crew of the Axiom 3 mission into orbit for an estimated two-week rendezvous with the International Space Station. About eight minutes later after the launch, Booster 1080 performed its landing burn and touched down at landing zone one. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.